Alright, so in this video, we're going to solve the so-called two-sum problem. And that problem is given as follows. So we're given an array of integers. We want to return the indices of the two numbers in that array such that they add up to a specific target that we're given. So we can assume that each input would have exactly one solution, and we can't use the same element twice. So anytime you're given a problem like this in the context of an interview, they'll generally give you an example, or if they don't, you should probably ask for one just so you have a really good understanding of how the problem uh, should be approached. So let's actually step through an example right now. So in the example, what we're going to do is we're going to be given a list of numbers, and the numbers we will be given is uh, this list here, 1, 3, 11, 2, and 7, and we're also going to be given a target. So in this case, the target is 9. So the point of our algorithm is it's supposed to go through this list and determine which two of the numbers in the list add up to the target. And in this particular example, it's pretty easy to see just from uh, sort of an eyeball. It's a short enough list where you can notice that 2 and 7, if you add those two numbers up, you will obtain the target value of 9. And so the algorithm is supposed to return the indices with which those numbers correspond. So what would be returned are the indices, in this case, 3 and 4, that correspond to the values 2 and 7. Okay, so that is the example for this problem, and there's a few different ways you can solve it. Well, generally, whenever you are given a problem like this in an interview, if you don't really have a good approach for an elegant solution, it's sometimes a good idea just to kind of do the most naive thing that you can possibly think of. Generally, the problems that you're given in an interview uh, are kind of similar to an onion. You start off with the outer layer, and as you go deeper and deeper and try to uh, refine the solution and refine the solution, you peel back these layers of the onion until you get to the sweet, sweet, delectable onion center. So, okay, what's the most naive outermost layer of the onion? Well, one thing we can do is we can just loop through this numbers list, and we can compare... Uh, the number that we're on with every other one to see if we can add up to the target value that we're after. So for instance, if we start at this value here, we start at 1, uh, 1 plus 3, is that 9? No. 1 plus 11? No. 1 plus 2? 1 plus 7? Okay, no luck so far. Now we go on to the value 3, and we start from here. So is 3 plus 11 equal to 9? No. 3 plus 2? No. 3 plus 7? And we'll continue on in this fashion until we go through the entire list. So this, this approach will indeed solve the problem, but for a large enough list, it can be prohibitive because the runtime of this approach will give you a runtime of big O n squared. Um, there is an approach for this problem that can actually give you a linear runtime, and if you know that there is such an approach, I, I encourage you to pause the video at this point and try it on yourself and try to figure out how to solve this problem in uh, linear time. And if you don't, uh, or if you aren't able to do that, or if you if you do, if you want to come back and check the solution, uh, I'll be here. So if you pause the video and done this, I'm going to assume that you've either done it or are stuck. So let's step through the uh, linear time solution for this problem. And what this solution is going to really leverage is this uh, target value. And we're really just going to have to loop through this numbers array once, or this list. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through this numbers list, and as we loop through, we're going to take the difference of the target and the element that we're on in our loop. So for instance, we'll consider the difference between, in the first element here, 9 minus 1. This will give us a value of 8. And what we're going to do is we're going to store the value that we obtained from this difference, as well as the index at which we obtained this value, into a dictionary. So we obtained a value of 8, and we have the index of 0. So a little bit more information on why these are here. So 8 is kind of letting us know we're going to consult this dictionary every time we go through the list. And if we encounter an 8 anywhere in this list, we know that we have the necessary ingredient of 1, because 9 minus 1 is 8, or uh, 1 plus 8 is 9. So we know that if we encounter an 8, we've got something that will give us a solution to this problem. And since we care about returning the indices 
of the two numbers, we want to keep track of the index at which this number uh, was obtained. So if that didn't quite stick, let's continue on in this example and hopefully by the end of uh, this particular example you'll see, and if not, we'll code up a solution. Okay, so the next thing in our list is we're going to encounter a 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to check if 3 is already in this dictionary, which it is not. So if it's not, we're going to take the difference between the target and the value that we're on. We'll get 6. And what we'll do is we'll store that value in the dictionary, also keeping the index at which that value was obtained, which is 1. All right, onward in the loop, we encounter 11. So uh, 11 is nowhere to be found in this dictionary. So 9 minus 11 is equal to negative 2. And we go on and store that into our dictionary. So negative 2 is at index 2. So now we're on 2. Is 2 in the dictionary? No, it's not. Negative 2 is, but 2 is not. So we'll say 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. And we'll store that in the dictionary. 2, 2, and uh, 2 was at index 3. Oh, I'm sorry, 7 was at index 3. And now we're at 7. So now what we do is we check whether or not 7 is in the dictionary. So 8, 6, uh, and then 7, negative 2, 7. So 7 is indeed in the dictionary. And what we do now is we know that we have a 7 and a 2, and the 7 and the 2 will give us 9. So we've recorded the index at which the uh, 7 occurs, and we're at the index uh, at which we are in the loop. So we have nums of i, which is the um, index of the value 7, and then we also have i, which is the index in the loop that we're going through, which is what we also care about. So this will give us uh, 3 and 4, the indices 3 and 4, which we know are the proper indices for this particular problem. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually code this up and see how uh, we can write it as a function. So let's define a function called toSum. And this will take a list of numbers and the target. And I'll just uh, put in the, let's just put these in now as an example so we can refer back to them later and test our function out. So we'll put this down here. And one thing that we want to do, just sort of as a preliminary check in this function, is we want to check whether or not the length of the list of nums is greater than or equal to 1. Uh, so if, if it's, or I should say, if the length of nums is less than or equal to 1, uh, we essentially don't have much to offer. We have to return false because we need at least two numbers to really uh, return back anything meaningful here. So if the length of nums is less than or equal to 1, we're just going to return false because there's no such entry that will give us a proper solution to this. Okay, so otherwise we're going to follow the approach that we outlined up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through this numbers list. So for i and uh, range length of nums, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, we're going to uh, define, first of all, a dictionary, which I neglected to do. So let's call this auxiliary dictionary, which is equal to an empty dictionary here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, we're going to check if the entry that we're on is in the dictionary. So if nums of i is in auxiliary dictionary, then what we're going to do is we're going to return essentially uh, precisely this stuff right here. So that's going to tell us the indices at which the values that we care about occur at. So return, let's say, auxiliary dictionary of uh, nums of i and i. So that would be uh, the solution. And then otherwise, we're just going to continue on in the loop and do this whole difference thing. So otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to say the auxiliary dictionary of entry uh, target minus nums of i, so that's this thing here, is equal to the index at which this occurred. So that's this, uh, this guy here, this index, because we want to store both the value, the difference, and also the index. And uh, that should pretty much be it. So if we run this now, so if we say print to sum of nums and target, and go over here, 
uh, if I do an ls, that file here that I'm writing to is over here. So if I say python to sum, we get the indices of 3 and 4, and that is done in linear time.